We often find ourselves defending Islam against Christian apologists. But we should not forget that there is another very active group that constantly takes Islam and Muslims as a target. Hindu nationalists. Recently, a well-known Indian page on Twitter made a bold and troubling claim that Islam has its own caste system and it's supposedly worse than Hinduism's. Let's break down these accusations. Now, here's the research they're so proud of. Please try not to laugh. They said we will expose it. But let's expose them instead. But first, let's quickly break down what the caste system is all about. So we're all on the same page. The Indian caste system is a social hierarchy that divides people into different groups based on their birth. It is a system that has been in place for over 3,000 years and is still prevalent in many parts of India today. The system is based on the idea of Varna, which refers to the four main categories of people. Brahmins, priests and scholars, Kshatriyas, warriors and rulers, Vaishyas, merchants and traders, and Shudras, laborers and artisans. Outside of these four categories are the Dalits, also known as untouchables, who are considered impure and are often relegated to menial and degrading tasks. To any listener unfamiliar with that system, that may sound horrific. And to any Muslim, completely opposite to the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. Some Hindus even, it is something worth rejecting to embrace other parts of the religion that they deem more appropriate. So, sorry to interrupt, I just um, want to get my head around this. So is it correct that one of the, um, what do you say, shlokas or the verses in the Manasmiti, or I think it's in the Gita or somewhere, where it says that the Shudras are basically to serve the other three, the other three classes? I, I'll have to locate that, I'm not sure of that. Okay, that's, that's because, fine. You no know, one, one, one thing I would say to you, as mm -hmm. when I said that I talk about my uh, religion, what, how I feel is, you know, let's say there is a huge tree which has been in existence for 5,000 years and that tree has undergone a lot of changes over the time and there is a lot of fruit which, uh, which has fallen from that tree. It is for me to decide whether I want to pick up the rotten and venomous fruit or I want to pick up the good fruit, eat it and become healthy. So that's how, when I say again and again that I choose whatever is the best, even if it is in some other scripture, I don't mind. But make no mistake, it is still a system that has its place in modern-day Hinduism, and the caste system is not just a social hierarchy, but also a system of oppression that has led to the marginalization and exclusion of certain groups. The Dalits, in particular, have faced centuries of oppression violence, and discrimination, and continue to struggle for their rights and dignity. This inhumane system has even been the reason why some Hindus chose to embrace Islam. It goes without saying, Islam rejects such ideas in the Islamic perspective is that all of humanity is created equal, and it is the deeds of the people that elevate them above other, not their race or their job. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Amuta. I'm working in Indian Embassy. So, in Islam, why there is no caste system? Yes, sister. Okay, my second question sister, is... Sister, ask the first question. After okay. I reply, you can ask the second question. Okay, fine. Give me the answer. Sister, ask the question, why in Islam there is no caste system? Because in Islam, we believe that all the human beings are equal, unlike in Hinduism. Quran says, Quran says in Surah Hujurat, chapter 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhu al-nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakin wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila alitarafu inna khalaqnaakum in the law yatkaakum inna la alimun khabir O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other, not you shall despise each other and the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person as taqwa the criteria for judgment in the sight of Almighty God for a human being to be superior to the other human being, it's not sex, 
It's not caste, it's not color, it's not wealth, it's not age, but it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it is piety, it is righteousness. Islam emphasizes the importance of equality and justice, rejecting the idea of a caste system and promoting the idea that all human beings are equal in the eyes of Allah. Every individual has the potential to be righteous and deserving of respect, regardless of their background or social standing. Islam teaches that the only criteria for superiority is righteousness, not birth or social status. This means that individuals from all walks of life, regardless of their caste or social background, can attain a high status in the eyes of Allah through their good deeds and righteous behavior. More than that, Islam emphasizes the importance of treating all people with kindness and respect, regardless of their social status. This includes treating others with dignity and compassion, and recognizing the inherent value and worth of every human being. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a strong advocate for social justice and equality. He treated people with kindness and respect, regardless of their background. He even respected slaves and told us that in the end, we are all slaves of Allah. So what on earth is this X account rambling about? It went on a 12-part thread describing in detail the alleged Muslim caste system. Have we been exposed? Have we been taught our religion by the Hindus? Well, it turns out anyone is capable of exposing their nonsense. And the first ones to do so were the commenters. And they did so with great humor and imagination. One Desi brother commented, Never heard of these words. I believe their etymological roots lie in WhatsApp University. But where does it call come from anyway? If you think the X page did some extensive research before publishing the thread, get ready to be highly disappointed. All its information stems from a video published one year ago by another Hindu nationalist on YouTube this time. The thing is, the video and its claims have been refuted many times, one brother having even done a deep dive in order to refute the completely bogus claims. This video is the time of the time, which is showing people that there is no one country, 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 there is no one country. But you can't tell us that there is no one country in society. This is impossible, because practice is the same, dressing is the same. Another example. Here are some people who are reading prayer. There is no one country, 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 there is no one country. Even Smile to Jannah made a video about it in his channel targeted to his Desi audience. But the recent X thread is making one very big claim compared to the video it's based on. The Hindu caste system is not that bad, while the non-existent Muslim caste system is horrible. Indeed, they claim, but since there is no reservation educating and SC, ST act for Muslims, so we can say currently casteism among Muslim is more than Hindu. The thing that we must remember is that the Hindu caste system is directly embedded in their scripture, whereas there is nothing in Islam that supports such practices. So that alone stops the debate. One example they cite in the thread is the marriage situation in the subcontinent, with families refusing to marry their children to people from a different group. While such practices have been reported by Desi brothers. They're not part of the religion. In a simple discussion with people of knowledge is enough to confirm that such things are not in any way permissible. The fact of the matter is that Hindu nationalists are completely desperate. Hindutvas, who recently clashed with Muslims in the West, not unlike Christians, are childishly trying to attack the fastest growing religion in the world instead of focusing on the reasons why people are no longer interested in the idolatry they preach. Some Hindu nationalists are trying to create fear and mistrust towards Muslims to further their own agendas. Others genuinely believe the misinformation they're spreading because they don't understand Islam or have been misled by biased sources. If you've been following Indian politics and social media, you have probably noticed a disturbing trend. 
Hindu nationalists spreading false and misleading information about Islam and Muslims. This isn't just a minor issue. It's a full-blown misinformation campaign that's causing real harm to Muslims and leading to violence. One other problem is that such lies put Muslims on the defensive, and it might hinder the desire to do da'wah to the Hindus. Just like we endure the persecution and lies of some Western outlets and keep doing or supporting da'wah in Western countries, we must understand that the Hindutvas and their social media goons are no reason to give up on da'wah. Instead, we must stand for the truth and keep spreading the message. For like Islam is turning out to be the cure to many of the issues in the West today, it can become the remedy of the many social issues that have been plaguing India for centuries. Let us stay patient and let us educate the ignorance like we have been taught to do. Allah is with us.